Bosses at Great Yarmouth's Outer Harbour have been defending their decision not to handle container ships. It could mean cranes built for the job and worth more than £7 million will never be used, as Eddie Price reports. They've become a familiar sight on Great Yarmouth's skyline, but may not be there for much longer. These cranes cost £7 million. They've never been used. And with Eastport, the company that owns the Outer Harbour, refocusing its efforts on offshore wind farms, aren't likely to be either. Eddie Freeman, who's the chief executive at Eastport, says the recession has caused a downturn in the container shipping business. But there's a window of opportunity in using the port for the wind farm industry. Our business plan is to stay flexible, it's to stay focused, it's what we do. We operate on several legs, we're not a single trick pony here, we've got numerous fronts on which we can operate. So as and when, you know, if the, if the container business drifts away for a while, then we rely on our other legs on new legs. But critics say it's just the latest letdown in a long line since the Outer Harbour was proposed in 2000. Back then, there were promises the site would bring passenger ferries and a buzzing container shipping industry to the town. The project received £18 million of public money. Now, 3.1 million of that came from Norfolk County Council. 1.6 million came from Great Yarmouth Borough Council. 8.6 million came from the East of England Development Fund. And 4.6 came from European funds. Three years have gone by and we're no further forward now. And £18 million of public money has, has been lost. Because I can't see the Outer Harbour getting all this wind uh, vane work and uh, decommissioning because other, other ports are already been set up. Harwich, Lowestoft. Great Yarmouth Borough Council couldn't speak to us on camera today, but they don't see there's any problem with the Outer Harbour. In a statement, they said the offshore sectors offer huge opportunities to Great Yarmouth and Norfolk. Any business has to adapt to market conditions, and I'm pleased that Eastport is playing to existing strengths. The storm clouds may be gathering over the outer harbour at Great Yarmouth, but one thing everyone agrees on, the future need not be so bleak. Eddie Price, Anglia News, Great Yarmouth. The fire service in Essex is to offer voluntary no-strike contracts. The Essex Fire Authority say the move will help guarantee public safety. Staff will get more money to work during times of strike action. It follows a long-running dispute in the county over job cuts. The Fire Brigade's union says it wants to continue discussions with the authority. Police are searching for armed robbers who held up a betting shop in Felixstowe. Two men with a gun went into Ladbrokes on Undercliff Road around 7.30 last night. No one was injured, but the raiders did escape with some cash. Now then, if you've passed through Kings Lynn Railway Station this week, you might have been offered a slice of delicious birthday cake. The buffet is celebrating 100 years of service, and back when it was founded, the gossip around the counter was every bit as juicy as it is today, as Sasha Twining's been finding out. Well, there's a lot of things that have changed in the past 100 years, some maybe more so than others. But one thing that has been here throughout is the Country Line Buffet and Bar on Kings Lynn Rail Station. It's been serving its customers with cups of tea for the last 100 years. Betsy, hello. 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 Betsy and her husband, oh, Alan, you. have been running the buffet for the last 24 years. It's a family business and it's a small business. We care about our customers. They're really important to us. You know, and I think that reflects in, in how we serve them. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. It starts your day off with a real buzz if you have a nice person like that. In 1910, if you'd ordered a pint of beer while waiting for your train, it would have set you back two old pennies. If you wanted a newspaper for the journey, that would have been another half penny for the Daily Mail. And if you were heading to London from Kings Lynn, you were facing a three-hour journey on Great Eastern Railways, changing at Ely. Today, that journey takes one hour, 40 minutes. It's not just the regulars that pop in for a cup of tea. Alan gets famous faces, too, on their way to the coast. A lot of authors come through who you wouldn't necessarily know, or people who work in the film industry on videos and so forth. Thank you. Thank you. It's got quite a different atmosphere than the usual cafes. And, of course, Alan and Betsy are such friendly people. As for the future, 
Alan says he'll be here for a good few years to come. I love it, so I would never do anything different. I'm here as long as the uh, British Rail are happy with me. Sasha Twining, Anglia News, Kings Lynn. Oh, the gossip they've heard in that buffet over the oh, years. Over the years, nice cup of tea as well. Yeah. Stand your spoon up in that, can't you? <laughs> Perfect stuff. Now on to football now, and Norwich have replaced Ipswich in the championship playoff places. The Canaries were looking good for a win at Millwall last night after this goal from David Fox there, but an injury time equaliser meant it was just a point. Norwich now fifth in the table. Ipswich, well, they're a point behind in seventh after a 2-0 defeat at home to Derby. Both goals coming in the second half from Chris Commons there. Meanwhile, South End, they went out of the Johnson's Paint Trophy at Roots Hall. Charlton's Thierry Racon with the only goal to put the Londoners through there. Brave men who showed unbelievable courage in the face of adversity. The tribute from Prime Minister David Cameron to our Battle of Britain heroes, including Tom Neill from Bungie in Suffolk. The nation will see them being honoured at the Pride of Britain Awards on ITV1 tonight, along with Colin Swan, who risked his life to save passengers on a burning coach. Andrew Johnston reports. An act of bravery that helped save the lives of more than 60 people from Luton. When off-duty policeman Colin Swan spotted their coach on fire on the M3 in August last year, he risked his life to get on board and get the passengers off. Tonight, the nation will be able to see him honoured by the Pride of Britain when Monday's ceremony is broadcast. <laughs> oh, I told you the Pride of History. Oh, lovely, lovely to meet you. Hiya, Colin. Oh. It wasn't me I had a fag on the back of that bus. <laughs> 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 Those he saved say thank you doesn't cut it. Without Colin, they say, they wouldn't be here. But he had a tribute of his own. I just want to say one thing. Um, I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for my unsung hero. For 30 years, who've looked after me, my wife. A special night it certainly was. A star at every turn. Pop stars, football stars and some very familiar faces from The X Factor. They all turned out to show their admiration. After almost two hours of glitz and glamour, a lifetime achievement for the last of the few, the Battle of Britain aircrew. The Prime Minister David Cameron introducing their story from the Cabinet war rooms. Now it might be 70 years since the Battle of Britain, but down here it feels like it was only yesterday when this country stood alone against fascism. Tom Neil. Right, <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm getting the kisses, girls. I know. One of the few was Wing Commander Tom Neal from Suffolk. His story was highlighted. Tom Ginger Neal, who was just 20 and flew 141 combat missions in his hurricane, shooting down 13 enemy aircraft. To this day, he still says, I should have been killed a dozen times. He was typically unassuming in his reaction. I don't think it feels very much different to the normal day of day's work, you know. I, I never think of it, to be perfectly honest. I'm not a hero. I'm a survivor. Whether Tom accepts it or not, his heroism is official. And Britain is proud. Andrea Johnston, Anglia News. I always find that a very emotional programme. A few, few eyes welling. <laughs> yeah, there will be. Well, you can see the Daily Mirror Pride of Britain Awards tonight on ITV1. It starts at 8 o'clock. Now, earlier, we asked for your thoughts on our top story this evening. On the eve of Remembrance Day, the firefighters banned from holding their religious service to remember our fallen heroes. Well, the debate has been holding up on Facebook, Twitter and email. Yes, let's take a look at a few of your comments, starting with Nathaniel Villett, who's put a post on Facebook saying, I think they should hold their remembrance service. It's something of a tradition and you can't make change for change's sake. Now, this is one from Colin Jacobs from Beckles in Suffolk, who echoes that saying, lots of fire firefighters lost their lives in the world wars. The fire officer should be disciplined. Alan Jeffries says it's wrong and we should always remember. Barry Clay simply puts it, one word sums it up, disgraceful. Now here's one from Wendy who says, Christians in this country are increasingly being marginalised and ignored. It's time to stand up and be counted. But Paul from Hertfordshire supports the decision. He says the majority of people these days are not religious and therefore it's a charade to be forced to take part in a Christian service. Thanks as ever for all of those responses. Very very interesting and of course you can carry on that debate on Facebook and also Twitter as well. 
Now, before we go, we've got a quick update on our top story this evening. We've had an email from the Norfolk County Councillor Paul Rice in response to that story about Norfolk Fire Service being banned from holding their religious Remembrance Day service. He says he was shocked, and despite sitting on the fire overview and scrutiny panel, he was not consulted. More on that on our late bulletin at 10.30. Until then, goodbye. goodbye.